that's my cousin Daisy. She is a junior and she's helped me every year since she was a little bitty thing and she wants to be a teacher when she grows up. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you this morning is we took a trip to Walmart so I'm going to show you all the great things that we brought. Our students are only required to bring um, scissors, glue sticks, pencils, and a pencil pouch and tissue paper. I mean, yes, tissues. So other than that, I had to buy all the rest. So I'm gonna show you what other things I bought. So we have, I bought folders for each subject and other things that we use them for. Markers. These mats I bought for like cushy seating spots. I bought a few cleaning products. Erasers pouches, dividers for uh, for me, Avery labels, construction paper, Astrobrat paper, um, colored manila folders, and just plain manila folders. These suction cup hooks. I'm going to be putting my charts on my windows, so that's why I needed those. Some glue bottles, magnets, staples, binder clips, um, uh, tape refills, and then some command refills, and just some post-it tab organizers. Then I went to Dollar Tree and I bought these things. So I'm going to have like a special student chair of the week and the kid that sits there gets to use my special supplies and I'm going to put this in the caddy. I got this all from the Dollar Tree. I also picked up these erasers for the Dollar Tree. I was going to put these in my reading group so when they meet with me they get to use these special erasers. Also from Walmart I had to buy some glue sticks and a refiller for my um, label maker. So. That's my first trip to Walmart. You can see that it's quite a lot. What I'm going to start doing today is putting away all these supplies. And while I'm doing that, I'm having my cousin, well, she volunteered to help. So I'm having her number folders for me. In the past, I've been really anal about making sure I have cute, fancy labels, but I've learned that the labels don't stick to these folders very well. They're plastic, vinyl. So what I'm having her do is putting a W for writing and numbering them 1 to 24. Uh, the red ones are going to be reading, so she's going to put R and number 1 through 24. The blue ones are going to be for writing, or no, the green ones are going to be for writing. So she's going to do a W and a number 1. So that's what she's going to be working on as I put all this stuff away. So here's how I organize my colored paper. This is my construction paper and my Astro Brights paper. I have a file hanging system and I'm currently making labels and I just sort them by color. And once again, this is why it's important to have a label maker because it makes your job so much easier. You just print it off, fill it, stick it right on. So Daisy has helped me create labels for my student folder so it just says student one student two student three and so on so this is where students will be turning in their completed work so instead of just turning it piling it all into a basket each student will be required to turn in their work into their number file so i'm hoping that this way at the end of the week or whenever i decide to check these files that i can see quickly um, who's missing what paper from each file and who hasn't turned in which assignment. So I just had my cousin um, clean out and organize this Lazy Susan that I've created. It's one of my favorite products and I think you would love it if you had it. So let me show you. Um, my stepdad actually helped me build this. I bought all these bins from Hobby Lobby. This um, circle part, you buy at Lowe's, already cut and made. It's already ready for you to go. You just buy it. There's a Lazy Susan kit, tool kit, that you screw in on the bottom. And um, I spray painted this red, and there you have it. My stepdad screwed on these buckets. And I've had this, it's held up really, really good. This is probably like the sixth year I've used it, if not, if not even more. It might be even more than that, but I'm pretty sure it's six years that I've had this. And I keep it at my guided reading table. 
it has my student erasers in there that I had bought earlier today and some dry erase markers scissors pens pencils my tape I also keep my stapler on here um, it's one of my favorite things I don't think I could live without it last year I had all of this on these windows and I would hang my anchor charts up here but that was a pain in the neck because who wants to climb on top of these cabinets to hang a poster it's terrifying especially if you're afraid of heights so this year my idea was to put that up there and I'm going to hang my posters on my window and these charts already had holes how they came so I just hole punched there where the hole was and I'm using these clear suction hooks to hang them on my window and I love this I think this is going to be a great great idea because for one it's going to be more at student eye level and not way up high on the wall and it's going to be much easier for me to take out and change out our posters how to hang up this fabric to cover these and I bought these magnetic buttons. You can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby. And my cousin's going to hot glue them onto the fabric and then they'll stick right up to and hang up here. Well, at least we hope. We're going to see if that works. I'll let you know. <laughs> Yesterday I mentioned that I wanted to move this calendar from up here to the door. So that's what I'm about to do now. I've been making student labels on the computer with their names on it and while we've been working in the classroom I have constantly been making copies of papers that I know we'll be using the first nine weeks so that's a time saver if you know what you need to make copies of do it while you can while you're doing something else um, Daisy is currently putting all of what we're going to be doing for science in all of the student folders for me so that's a big help there so while we're working in the room i'm making copies of what is going to go in students writing folders these resources that go in their folders um, will stay in there all year and as we meet with them and i look at their writing and learn what they need help on i will highlight the things that they're struggling with so maybe a student writes the G incorrectly maybe they don't hang the G over the line so I'm gonna use a yellow crayon and highlight this on this paper so that they can remember that or maybe on this blends chart the student doesn't know the st sound so I might color in this box so that they can remember next time that the ST makes the st sound also in here I'm gonna have a personal word wall I don't post a word wall around my room. I will make a poster of frequent, myth, frequent missed words that we will refer to, but as far as a giant word wall, I don't have one of those in my room. But again, if I notice that they are missing the word saw in their writing, then I will color in saw right here. So hopefully that they can refer back to this for the future. Um, I also have in long vowel patterns our controlled vowels capital letter reference page um, editing page so these will be the resources that will go into the binder and they will keep there all year these resources I did not make all of them I've only made a few uh, most of them are free on the internet or on Teachers Pay Teachers. Hey, I'm going to show you how to make some quick labels or name tags for your students. So I bought these name tags at a teacher store and they're very, very flimsy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the back of these. And put it on cardstock. And I can fit six on a page. Then I'm going to take a student name that I have printed on a label, peel it off, stick it on. Now I have all these names and I'm going to put this whole sheet in the laminator and then I can just cut out the name tags. 
Now these are the name tags that I use for my tables and I said and I put a velcro dot on the back because students move around their tables a lot so that that way they can pick up their name tag and move where they need to go. So I hope that saves you some time and energy. So Daisy's been scrubbing the tables with an magic eraser. I tried the disinfectant wipes and they just wouldn't work so we had to go with the magic erasers and they are working beautifully. While she's doing that I've been cutting out these name tag labels that I created and I did make a couple of extra blank ones. Uh, one I could use for when new students move in. All I have to do is add their name with the label on it and I can cover it with packaging tape to protect it and then I can also use any extras for labels around my classroom on things I had these so I went ahead and just <coughs> laminated these so I could use as labels around the room I had these two so I made two sets of class names one will be for name tags the other I'm probably going to use for like um, partnering my kids so we have to have students and partners so I'll probably use these to assign and post their partners so that's what we we're up to right now cutting and scrubbing I did want to mention that I'm just eyeballing the edges around there they're not perfectly even and I'm happy with that there are things in life as a teacher that you cannot be a perfectionist on and stress out about these are name tags. Kids will not care if one side's a little bit wider than the other side. I promise you. It's really hard today and we're ready to go home. Join me tomorrow. Bye.